everyone, welcome back to my channel, Lisa's TBR Shelf. Today we are going to be talking about my July wrap up. I read eight books in July, which I considered a huge success since I've never actually read that much in one month before, you know, between school and work and everything. So I'm very proud of myself. So the first book I finished in July was A Conjuring of Life by V.E. Schwab. Uh, it is the third and final book of the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. Uh, if you haven't read the trilogy, the book is about a character named Kale, and he is this person who has magic. And in this world, there are four Londons, Red London, White London, Grey London, and Black London. Um, Kale travels between Red London and Grey London, delivering messages from one king to another. Now, he meets someone in Grey London named Delilah, and uh, together they like figure out something's happening with magic, and just craziness ensues. Um, and so this is the final book of the whole series. I really loved it. I gave it five stars. I thought it was a great ending, and it makes me more excited to definitely read B.E. Schwab's other series, for sure. So if you haven't picked up the series, definitely pick it up. It's great. Next book I read was The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. I gave it three stars only because I I think there was so much hype on it that I was expecting something amazing and magical and I didn't get that from this book at all. You know, it's about it's about two characters and there's like this pact made by the people that almost kind of own these two characters. One is a girl's father and another is um a guy's friend I guess and you know the deal is like they're supposed to fight each other with magic and whoever wins you know um, that's great like they win but you know it's just I mean I love the love aspect between the two characters but I didn't like the plot as much it wasn't as magical as I pictured it to be you know it wasn't amazing like when I think of the night circus and I read the synopsis I thought this magical circus that appears you know like at night and somewhere different every time I thought that would have been amazing but I didn't particularly like it so yeah I just gave it three stars Next was The Magic Misfits by Neil Patrick Harris. I also gave this three out of five stars. I thought it was a very adorable book. It's about a character named Carter who's a magician um, and is, he lives with his parents and one day his parents, you know, just don't come back home. So he has to live with his Uncle Sly, but his Uncle Sly is awful. So he decides to run away and he meets this group of kids and they're also magicians. And I thought it was cute, but you know, it was a bit juvenile for me. It is a middle grade book, so that makes sense. Uh, but I thought it was really cute and I think great, um, you know, a middle grade person would love this book. And it is actually narrated by Neil Patrick Harris. If you read the audiobook, it's Neil Patrick Harris telling the story, which I actually found very cool. I really like that. And there's special effects. It's not just them reading the words, but they add the special effects of certain things in there, like the sound effects. So I thought that was great too. So um, definitely recommend this to like younger kids for sure. Next was The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. I also gave this three out of five stars, um, mostly because... You know, it's about a Mozart's sister who is also an amazing musician and she wants to compose as well, but she can't because she's a woman and she's not allowed to. Um, so Mozart has a sister and she's also a musician and she wants to compose just like he does, but he, she's not allowed to because she's a woman. She's only allowed to um, play the music that people compose. But then she meets this person who comes from like this other magical world and he gives her the opportunity to compose like he you know does something to allow her to compose and uh but there's a price to pay and she realizes that the price is just too high also so I think I thought it was okay, but I felt like the magic and the magic, uh, the music and the magical part weren't really connected to each other. I felt like there was could have definitely been a more like connection between the two. I found them to be two separate things. Like when she was in the magical aspect, 
the music wasn't really there. And when she was in the musical aspect, the magic wasn't really there. So I thought, you know, there was that weird separation between the two. I gave it three out of five stars because I thought it, you know, I like to see the side of Mozart's sister. But all in all, I didn't really like the entire story together. So, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll read another series and love that one. Next, I had Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. Uh, I think I also gave this three out of five stars. Uh, it's about a girl um, who lives in the time of Jack the Ripper, and she is bizarre for that time period as a girl because she likes science and like all the gross body stuff, you know, of science, and she wants to like just dissect people and like dead people obviously and like learn about them and that's not proper for a girl at that time and so her uncle who's actually also a scientist and doctor um allows her to like learn from him and learn in his class and she meets someone named thomas who um is the same as she is and you know together they try to figure out who is jack the ripper and um stop him um i i thought it was cute you know but i just felt like there wasn't a lot of depth there and i felt like there could have been much more depth i'm going to continue with the series because i like the idea but um i'm hoping each book will grow as time goes on so yeah next was now i rise by kristen white I gave it also three out of five stars. I didn't particularly like this one as much as I liked the first one, and I darkened, mostly because it was all politics. They just talked and talked about things they were going to do but didn't do them, and they just talked the whole time. And then when it was part of, like, the action stuff, you know, that was, like, rushed through, and I'd rather have more of action and less of talking because I found the politics to be kind of boring for me, so... Yeah, I gave it three out of five stars. Now, I did finish the series, um, and the next one was Bright We Burn by Kristen Way. This is the final book in the trilogy. Um, three out of five stars, you know? It was kind of similar. I mean, there was more, some more action, but a lot of just talking and, like, planning and not doing anything, which I found boring. I was actually going to DNF the series, but I was in the last one and I thought, why not? For that reason, I gave it three out of five stars. I'm hoping her other series will be better and I will enjoy them more. Um, but yeah, um, I was actually thinking of DNFing this series, but then I thought, why not continue? You know, you're at the home stretch. There's one book left. Just finish it. It's shorter than the other one anyway. But yeah, I just didn't enjoy it very much. The last book I read this month, which I just finished today, was The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. I gave this five out of five stars. I read the first one, and that was like two years ago or something, and I liked it. And then this one came out, and I was like, yeah, I had to read it, and I loved it. So this takes place like 15 years after um, what happened in the show in season three, if you haven't watched it, it's amazing. Go watch it. Um, and it's three points of view. So you have Aunt Lydia, another girl inside of Gilead and a girl outside of Gilead in Canada. And they intertwine in the story itself at some point. Um, but I just found it interesting because, you know, Margaret Atwood, she continued with the show in a sense. Like there was a, they talked about baby Nicole. They talked about Alfred and what she's done, you know. And I just thought that was amazing, you know, that she incorporated things from the show into her book. And I really, I really don't want to give too much away, you know, because I want everyone to be just as shocked as I was when I like figured things out. But I definitely recommend it. Um, I think it's amazing. And it's a wonderful uh, continuation to the series and ending to the series. Like, I, I think this is the end, you know, I don't think she's going to write another one in this world. But, uh, you know, she says she wrote it because a lot of people are asking questions about what happens after. And this is essentially it. You know, this is what happens after. So um, I thought it was just 
great read. I'm so happy I read it. I'm so happy I finished it today because this was part of my reading rush TBR and I did not finish in time. So I was like, if I don't finish this time, I want to finish it by the end of the month. So I did and I'm happy about it. And I actually want to kind of try to read more Margaret Atwood books. Excuse me. Because I really like her as an author and I want to see what else she has written. Like if it has things to do with our society or stuff like that because I just thought it was amazing. Wonderful book. Totally recommend it. Five out of five stars. Go get this book. It's great. Well, that is it for my uh, July wrap-up. Eight books, you know. I, I, I did good this month and I'm hoping next month I can continue and I will definitely post a video about what I'm going to read in August. And yeah, so I'll see you next time in another video. Bye.